I'm Ron Carriker, uh, my company Seven Media Group. I represent and work with uh, a number of different brands and businesses, but primarily in the power sports industry, <coughs> the United States and Canada. And I work with about 100 Harley dealerships. So they're all independently franchise owned. Nick happens to be one of my standout clients that uh, really uh, implemented, uh, has implemented a mobile strategy, has done a lot of different things. So I've come up with new things, new ideas. He's the one I go to first. So um, hopefully today we'll share with you a little bit of some of the things that he's done at his dealership, some of the things that um, you know he's helped me with to work with other dealers. So uh, we really, uh, we hope you enjoy it. We're, we're happy to be here since we just flew in this morning. <laughs> Yeah, so if we doze off, don't <laughs> uh, Like you said, I'm Nick from uh, Route 66 Harley Davidson. It's a dealership in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, we're actually been a, a top 10 dealership in the U.S. the last two years, top 20 the last four, um, and we took over five years ago. Um, so, and with that, we've actually acquired two new dealerships this year. So I'll be over to three starting very soon. Yeah, so when Nick got a position at Route 66 was right about five years ago, and the first thing he did was contact me and wanted a new mobile. So he immediately, his ideas and thoughts were, you know, that's something that I want to do that, that not a lot of dealers at that time were doing. I've been in business about seven years and have worked with dealerships, but and it's grown obviously now versus seven years ago. It's much different. So um, Morris has talked a little bit about this already. Um, Obviously, loyalty is a major factor um, in success for mobile in a lot of different aspects, whether it's an app or texting or a variety of things, social media on your mobile device. Um, but loyalty is very important, and obviously, it's very important to the Harley Davidson industry um, as, as a whole. So, the characteristics these are some really basic things just that I like to look at, and it really it is indicative of the Harley brand and what you would expect. Innovation equals continued success. They innovate. They, they, you don't just have a chopper, an old bike. You know, they really do a lot of new things, are progressive with what they design, their uh, clothing, apparel, things like that. Uh, customer service fosters brand loyalty. Again, the, the experience that they sell. It's not just a bike. It's not just a, a t-shirt. It's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's something that people enjoy and, and, and want to be around in all as, on all aspects. Then happy employees. So uh, that's one of the biggest things. And, and you know, Nick knows this, that a lot of the guys that, that work for Harley are riders. They have a bike. They're a customer themselves, really. So that's a big aspect of, um, you know, where you really get a loyal customer uh, through the employees, obviously. <coughs> so brief real quote, fierce loyalty is the unshakable commitment we give to companies that we feel are an integral part of who we are. And again, that's Harley Davidson. It's who I am, who we can't imagine life without, companies that become an essential part of how we define ourselves. Um, like Morris mentioned, the person with the tattoo, I think he took a sneak peek at my, uh, my presentation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's absolutely about how you define yourself. When you are so uh, tied to a brand, that you would put something on your body and not get paid for it, but that you would do that and adorn yourself with a, a, a company, a commercial brand, is pretty incredible. And it's pretty unique, really, in the industry, in, in the world, in terms of who's going to get a tattoo, because you're not probably going to get a lot of those. So Har Harley Davidson really is, is, again, a unique brand that the experience and the lifestyle and everything that goes along with it um, you know, I guess there's some, probably a lot of Apple people that might get an Apple tattoo, but anyway. <laughs> so a little bit, I mostly believe that Unite's traditional offline with new online programs in a way that is more meaningful and relevant to each consumer. And that's really where Nick comes in. Nick, Nick has done so much with going into a, a, a 110 plus year old brand that has this mindset the demographic is a little older, or you think it is, or you don't think they're going to adopt new technologies and things. So the innovation part of it and adding online programs to go with the offline things that they've already experienced is, is a challenge. Um, so let's we'll start out here. Um, to understand the customer's journey, what's what's best for the customer? So as I mentioned, Nick, um, you know, you, you were faced with a brand that you had to represent and work with, and one of your challenges obviously was to get Customers to get them to engage, um, you know, and, and, and embrace the dealership through technology. Like so that more. takes us back to the beginning, whenever I said we took over the dealership five years previous. Um, my 
huge challenge for me is how do I reach these customers that are loyal to the brand and invite them back in. And I thought mobile was perfect because you got to think about the demo that I'm trying to reach. And it's not me. I'm a younger guy at that point, and I'm tech savvy. I've been on Facebook, I'm social media. I have my cell phone. What what can I do to um, to reach this older demo who, who may not be as tech savvy? And so that's why I went SMS. It's a simple message, and I can send them what we're doing every week. With that brand that or that dealership in particular. We came in and started doing events, and we invited the customers back to the store to let them celebrate the culture. Not try to sell them necessarily on something right away, but hey, we're a new ownership group, we're here, um, we, we want you guys to come out, ride, have fun with us. Maybe it's live music, maybe we have um, you know, chili cook-offs, whatever it is. I mean, there's all kinds of different events. I've thrown 50 plus over my last five years. And, and they love them all now, but and it's really it's really sorry it's really interesting that six seven years ago when I started you know I had I had dealerships tell me that their customers don't text, um, which was complete crap because we all I mean they do you know that's almost ubiquitous thing everybody you know text messages in some form or fashion at least that's what the numbers say um, they said they didn't text you know so to, to when Nick implements this you know five years ago. Um, you know, you're, you're bringing something in that a lot of people think, well, this isn't going to work because these are all old guys. You know, they, they're 50 years old. They don't have cell phones to text. They got flip phones or whatever it is. Um, did you see challenges when you first, you know, how much success did you have? What was your intent, like with the customer journey itself, to get them engaged? How did you get them in your mobile club? How did you get them started? Well, we had a huge customer database already. And so these people have given us permission to Get market to them, them right. and, and bring them in, you know, whether it's for service or parts or clothing. And so why not reach out to them and say, hey, do you want to be a part of this customer customer loyalty club where you know what we have going on at all, all the time, you know, whether it could be a promotion for 20% off leather jackets, something as simple as that. And they had never even seen this before. Wow, straight to my phone, I get a simple message, and an older guy, and I know that there's a St. Patty's Day party going on this weekend at Route 66, and I can go down there and have some beer, and ride around with my friends, and have some food. And <laughs> yeah, let's let's give away beer and ride your horse. Oh, <laughs> so I was wondering about that. That came out. Wrong. That so came out wrong. <laughs> obviously, we monitor that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, invite them back to come hang out with us, and they were blown away by it. We had some backlash from people who don't want to be messaged all the time, which is fine. I don't want you a part of that club. You don't want them, you know messages coming in from us. So, talk a little bit about us. your channel. So, so a little bit in terms of like you have SMS now. You, you know, you've done that for quite some time. Um, you know, you, you've moved into other areas. Your social media is really strong. How did you tie in some of these things to make it seamless? And the other things that you, the dealership was doing before you got there. You know, your events and things like that. How did you tie it together? And how did mobile help you do that? So growing our social media page was kind of hand in hand with growing the mobile side because as I pointed out, somebody of my age had been on Facebook for five years before I even got to the dealership. But the biggest growth in Facebook five years ago was in the older demo, which is our key target of 35 to 54. And um, so tying that mobile in, I, you know, the perfect example is saying, hey, text in a short keyword, whether it's long sleeve t-shirts, to 55678, which would be our short code or phone number. And um, you get a coupon cost back to you. Take that into the store, you got 20% off for the next two weeks. So you do so, like your radio commercials. So radio you commercials the same as actually if we're going to, um, we have a big arena downtown in, in Tulsa, and so we partnered with them in a lot of concerts. Tickets all the time. We give them away. People love free stuff, so text in to win. And I'm just getting all of these people to my mobile club, which hand in hand gets them where I want them as far as finding out about our promotions and events that we have. 
So the purchasing journey, this is one thing that, that again, is a little unique in terms of how the Harley brand represents itself. It's not selling stuff, driving it down your throat. You know, it's not always coupon driven. It's not a discounted product. Um, you know, talk a little bit about getting those customers in the store. You mentioned, you know, texting a coupon back, but you know, talk about your events a little bit. You know, that's something that, that the culture expects, but for you, for the dealership, you expect something in return, which would be, I assume, selling products, services, things like that. Yeah, so not always placing that discount, like I said, having events at this store or bike nights around Tulsa at the time um, were really big because the, they like to celebrate the culture, but they weren't used to celebrating that. The dealership before that, um, it had became, become known as the old people place where they would come for coffee and donuts. And that's the event you would come and eat donuts and drink coffee on Saturdays. I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't sound very fun to me. So as I came in, and I think that's part of why I got brought in was that I had kind of a more young mindset of like, hey, let's really spice this up a little bit, and try to have some fun with an awesome brand. And, and so not pushing these discounts down your throat, but having, a, you know, giving away free stuff and having people at the store and um, doing different things like that, you're automatically going to drive people into the store. Or the dealership. Talk a little bit about your, your videos. You know, you, you text out, you have the, the, the local radio guy sing video for you, and you were doing, you're featuring price points of bikes, but it was more about the culture. I mean, they were kind of more bought into what was going on, even though they're kind of pitch men. Um, talk about how that went and how you executed that. Yeah, so we had two local talented guys come in, and they would do different sketches on every product that we had in inventory, whether we're doing something with service, um, it could be something as how do you, uh, what would happen if you put your bike on a dyno and um, measure it. Not a dinosaur, a dyno is like a machine that you can, can measure <laughs> horsepower and you figure out what, you know, what you can do to it. But um, parts, I mean, just different information, um, motor clothes, and so we would test the video out linked to YouTube and you could simply make one click and you're watching video uh, these two guys, and we integrate that onto our social platforms, Facebook and everything like that, run ads on those, and we had a huge response off of it. And I, I can measure just over a four month period of time where, let's say we promote 30 bytes, we can sell 20 of them. Um, so, and that was the biggest thing, is at the end of the day, I want to provide our ownership with ROI on what's mobile doing for us, and I can directly relate that with all of these different keywords and um, coupons that we bring in and, and, and bike specials. So. We've, we've touched on this a little bit already about the, the legs, <coughs> integrating the old methods, old marketing strategies to the new. So before you were there, before, you know, you still see this in other dealerships right now. Um, you know, they still, do they do a lot of direct mail in the UK? Do you, do you guys do the print, printed flyers, they send it to you in the mail. Um, Harley Davidson still does quite a bit of that. And in the United States, they still do quite a bit of that, but um, very, very ineffective. Um, so those are kind of things that you were faced with, uh, I guess. How, how did you go about phasing those kinds of things out and replacing it with a digital strategy? What were some other things that you were like, well, coffee and donuts was another one, so. Well, I mean, if we're talking old marketing versus digital, it's, that's easy for me because at the end of the day, I can go in and say, how, do, how are we measuring this? When, whenever we did this $30,000 direct mail campaign last year, did we see anything off of it? And not one manager from any department could tell me anything. But I could go on and say, well, we sold 200 units last year because of our website and because of all the retargeting banners that I've done or, you know, driving them to our mobile site with, a, you know, through our text message. Yeah. So that goes and, into the operations. The next, the next point here, that, you know, um, the operations side of it, like you're talking about, you, you can effectively manage and measure responses through mobile and through the marketing efforts that you have. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, like your parts manager or your service manager, like getting a text message when your bike's ready, things like that. Oh, yeah, well, so mobile integrated that way, so it's, it's great. Yeah, I, mean, I get text messages for when I have a haircut appointment. So I was like, why can't I do this with service and parts? And I don't see any other Harley Davidson dealers doing this at all, which is kind of crazy. Um, so Harley as a whole, I mean, 
every store is franchised, so every store has different ownership. I mean, like like I said, we're gonna we're an ownership group now, so we're gonna be over several. There are other ownership groups around the country. There's one that has 20 something stores. But looking at all of these, and of course I uh, researched them like crazy. None of them. They're all behind the times. I mean, they're behind the times of car dealerships. <laughs> so trying to take our dealership and bring it to the new age and make everything easier for our customer base who like things simple, I think is the biggest thing for me. Well, and it's interesting, like in the previous panel, talking about um, taking risks, taking, you know, challenging and, and what to do next, next year, five years down the road. Um, you know, working with a brand like Harley Davidson, uh, there, there's like this really small learning curve. I mean, you know, you've got to, you really got to hold their hand, you know, and because of the demographic and things, um, talk a little bit about really Harley's intent or purpose and what their ex expectations are of getting younger. I mean, that's one of the things I know we really are responsible for working and getting getting younger owners. You know, they, these older bikers are getting old. You know, they, they somebody's got to come in behind them and, and buy bikes. So that Harley corporate is making a huge push for that younger uh, demo. Um, they're making a huge push towards women riders. Um, and they're basically doing it by releasing different types of models that aren't just the big baggers that appeal to that 35 to 54 demo. And so with that, your advertising has to go that way too. So it's it's challenging um, and it's, it's very, I, I know from talking to female customers or younger guys, they feel intimidated walking into a Harley Davidson dealership where you have the entire sales staff with sleeve tattoos and they know that they've been riding bikes their entire lives. How do I go in there and approach this person about maybe being interested in buying a motorcycle? So I think the frontline staff is definitely the, the first place that you want to go, and that's something that we've really tried to do is integrate. We actually just added a female salesperson to hopefully make the, that process easier. And um, and Harley Corporate's doing a really good job of their marketing nationwide trying to appeal and reach those people in the areas where they think that they might be. And a lot of that's digital. I mean, a lot of the ways that they're reaching that demographic is <coughs> through things you're, you've implemented already or that you're doing. Uh, they're, they're not, you're not getting young customers to come out for coffee and donuts. And, and they're not listening to the radio in, in normal circumstances or they don't read the newspaper anymore, which few still exist. And so you're reaching them through social media, through events that you do. Um, talk a little bit about um, like your, your uh, your UFC, your uh, fight night stuff that you would do and have uh, have girls set out with tablets and get customers to sign up. And you, you talk a little bit, you actually were able to show a conversion, like you really got new customers in that had never been to the dealership from that. Well, that was a, another good way that we implemented mobile was um, specifically geared towards that younger demo and um, using UFC fight nights, which we have a hard rock casino. I don't know if that's relevant. But, uh, they do have hard rock cafes. Okay. <laughs> in Oklahoma, we're in Oklahoma. We have a lot of casinos in Oklahoma. Small bubble, so I'm just I'm throwing stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, we have a hard rock in Tulsa, and having the UFC fight nights, they're big. 5,000 seat arena, sold out every time, and it's right there in that you know 18 to 34 demo that I was trying to reach. I partner with them. I have um, bites in the lobby. I have my promo team out there with tablets. Where they're signing people up to um, so to be a part of the kiosk, and you would yeah. So it, it's, and... it's all on Wi-Fi, and you're, you're signing up, and if you sign up, you get free Harley memorabilia. Yeah. And so that was one way that we were able to track those fight numbers <coughs> with people's phone numbers, and then go back and cross-reference that with our database on purchasing for that last year. Have we, you know, done enough events with the younger demo to? Make them feel comfortable kind of thing. And so many of these things really sound simple. I mean, I'm sure everyone's shaking their head going, yeah, okay, we did that, we do this, we do text, you know. But it works. And that's really, I mean, the, the testament to what Nick's done, he's implemented things to his customers that um, he didn't overwhelm them. You know, it wasn't like, hey, we've got an app, you got to have this if you want to do anything. You know, he really has done a good job of, of again, holding their hand, leading them along. And, doesn't always have to be the latest technology to engage the customers, um, and this is a proven point of that. Even the younger demographic that download a hundred apps on their phone and they have social media, 
they text message, you know, there's, he's done a variety of things that have embraced them and brought them in the store. And the fact that they can measure that has, has been huge because a lot of the other dealers that I work with, a lot of the dealers around the country, they don't get it. I mean, they, 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 they think sometimes in a sense, like you mentioned earlier, um, you know, if you keep thinking ahead, like you're going to do this later, 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 you never do anything, right? So, and that's what a lot of them I think are doing. They think, well, if, I, if I'm not going to have an app, then I'm just not going to do anything. Um, so, I think what you've done in, in, in integrating the small pieces has allowed you to grow. We talk a little bit about kind of next steps, like what are some of the things that you feel like you can now offer to your customers because you taught them to be a little more tech savvy? Well, I was going to go back a step and say um, what you're talking about, the small things, even, even though we're talking about simple text messaging, the text messaging itself is not simple. I've worked with, I've, in the past, uh, I was working with an agency that handled 15 dealerships, and a lot of those dealerships would send out messages, and they were terrible. So the message has to be relevant, and you have to put some thought behind it. What, what are you sending? And switching it up, we're talking about, okay, I'm sending links to videos where I've just spent money to have professional talent come in and talk about this product. So there's more than just, oh, I'm going to send a text message out this Monday about this bike. Um, Coupons. All right. Well, let's give them a different way. We're going to have this promotion. They can come in and redeem it. They're actually doing something on their phone. It's different than saying, "Hey, we got 20% off leather jackets for two weeks, the next two weeks." So I think. So like the apparel. Well, the apparel part of it. You know, you, you see a lot of young, uh, even younger demographic will come in and buy apparel because it's cool. They're not going to buy a bike necessarily. Um, you've done so much in that area. Talk about your your online store. Like oh, the yeah. Steps of you know what you're. So I, uh, in November, launched an online store. Um, the thing with Harley Davidson is I can't offer every product in my store, leather jackets, every part. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of products if I want to be a part of HarleyDavidson.com, where I, they allow me to be a dealership that people can pick their product up at, and then I get a portion of that sell. Um, so in order for me to do that, I'd have to cut ties with them. What I can do is offer Route 66 Harley Davidson <coughs> clothing and memorabilia to anybody and still be a part of HarleyDavidson.com. So that's what I did. I thought with our name being so iconic, and, um, and, and it's funny because we get it from Chicago to LA, people riding Route 66 from Europe all the time. Yeah, do you guys know what Route 66 is? We, we talked about this a second ago. That's you know, their song. Daniel <laughs> yeah, okay. Kicks. So, so we get these groups that ride through, and they spend an entire day at our dealerships. So I thought, well, why not market to them the t-shirts and whatnot that they're always trying to buy whenever they come in? And it's been really successful for the first two months. Our highest price point product on there is $54.99 for a hoodie. And as you know, our leather jackets can be $600, $700. So my but my cost is really low on it. And over the last two months, just starting off the ground, uh, we're at $3,000 of sales. And we've spent 200 bucks. So we're yeah, making money. Marketing that you already had in place. And the things that you were doing. And it doubled off the first month. Yeah. And our main sales are overseas. Italy, Spain, and Canada have been my top three sellers. And I've done it all through Facebook. Yeah, essentially, so. You, you've done your, your Facebook advertising, some of your Google advertising, you know, knowing that the majority of people that, that respond to those ads are on their phone. Um, so your store is mobile friendly. So talk a little bit about that, some that, and then talk a little bit too about geotargeting. You know, some of these things are starting to come up. You couldn't explain that to a customer. They're never going to understand really geotargeting. You mean, okay, you know, they're, they're not going to get it. But that's something that you kind of started to battle a little bit with in terms of location for those customers. So going back to the first part, we made this the site responsive. Um, I, I see 70% of our traffic on our site is mobile. So obviously making it mobile friendly is the number one thing that you can do with the website. And that's what we did with our online store. Big success. I just redid our other website where that is responsive. Just like it does on a desktop, like it would on your phone. So um, that's been that's been great as far as capturing leads, and we've seen a huge improvements. What was the second part of your question? 
sorry. Well, the geolocation. Oh, yeah. Specific the of knowing. So, not, yeah. Not the people overseas as much, but, yeah. you know, a bit about we have a location. We have a competitor five miles away. We're the two closest competitors in the entire nation. And um, why? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 and, it's, Harley, and Harley is very, very particular about protected <coughs> territories of sale. Like, they've got it down to streets that you can't cross over and market you know, across the street from these guys, you know, so talk about how you... There's a line drawn down the middle of our city, and they get the downtown event areas, so fairgrounds and places where, and the, the arena that we had that I was doing ticket stuff with, <laughs> we get the territory wars. But anyways, um, so we, like you said, they're, they're very... Uh, controlling and controlling over, over those, those territories. But your geolocation, so you're so we were able to target things. the area where the yeah. other dealership is with the geolocation and the retargeting banners and, and when those, when our customer base is at, at that store, which they will be. Everybody who, who wants a Harley, so there's 6% of the population that even care about Harley dudes. So you gotta take all those people, they're, they're in Tulsa and they're gonna know, all right, there's Route 66 and then there's Myers there. We have an advantage because we have a 50,000 square foot showroom, there's just 10,000. But they've been there 100 years when we've been there 15. But we've smoked in the last five, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's right, your sales have been incredible. But uh, what's great is that in that in that market of the Metro Tulsa area, 600,000 people, we're top 10, they're top 25. So, in the country. It's pretty amazing the population size of, of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and imagine the number of bikes they sell. You would think that it would saturate at some point, but they keep selling more every year. So, the thing that I think a great takeaway um, is, is to talk a little uh, briefly the, the data part of it, the, the, the information that you have. You mentioned it early about the existing customers that you had. I mean, we're talking 20, 30,000 customers in your database, right? I mean, that was one of the things where you immediately, they have an opportunity tap into that audience that was already there and then start teaching and, and going forward and then the same thing was applied to your all your digital strategy with the geolocation things like that your understanding of your audience has evolved and you're using the technology to really cater to them better right?